Welcome to Kenny Quest First Ride, where I test ride motorcycles I've never ridden before in the hopes that I find the perfect motorcycle for me. This week I'm riding the 2023 Harley Davidson CVO Street Glide. All reactions are authentic and based on my past experience. I'm a newer rider. I ride a 2021 Harley Davidson Iron 883 Sportster with a Stage 1 upgrade and a vintage 1996 Harley Davidson Heritage Softail Special that I fixed up and made road ready. Links to those playlists in the description below. Let's ride. All right, 2023 CVO, the 121. Full digital display. <laughs> I just got off the Ultra Classic saying how much I like analog gauges. And now I'm faced with full digital gauges. Very interesting, but it looks cool. I mean, it's bright. Of course, your music in there, navigation, where to, okay. Notice that delay, but that was pretty cool. How that's set up like that. Yeah, I like that navigation, just pops right up in the middle of your screen. And it's accurate, we're in Destination Daytona. But uh, yeah, this is a, uh, a cool bike. So we got this neat little way to block some airflow into you. We'll see how that works uh, when we get moving. Now this has the fixed mirrors. See how much adjustability, you don't get much. But I really don't need much. I'm not catching my shoulders at all. Rockford Fosgate sound system in the fairing and also in the top of the bags. Got a little bit of more wind projection here that you can adjust. Very cool. All right, we'll start out in rain mode for a little bit as we're cruising slow speeds, getting out of here. Oh yeah, look at that, baby. That's a cigar tray if I ever saw it myself. It's got a USB cord in the back here that you can plug in, but a great place for your phone. It's gonna put RAM mount and all those other mounts out of business, potentially. Because you really don't need, because you got the navigation, you know, right there. And you can communicate on your phone and everything through this, provided that you got, uh, you know, Bluetooth on your helmet. But nothing's changed with the CBO. You still have the Harley Shake at idle which is what you want. I mean, I hope they never get rid of that. Let's hear that idle, that exhaust note. Interesting. So when I turn my, when I turn my grip, it's got this little delay. Woo! All right. Friction zone is definitely different with this motorcycle. Okay, yeah, this engine's a little bit different. It's got a little bit of pep at idle. It's got a heel to toe shifter on it. I was asking myself, what is that bumping my heel of my foot? And I looked down and it's the uh, shift knob. So I have not ridden a bike with a heel to toe shifter. So toe is up and heel is down. I know that much. <laughs> now the sound at first gear it's kind of like a sounds like a Murray lawnmower but I do appreciate the little bit of jumpiness at from coming from a stop and giving it a little bit of at a high rpm that's gonna if you're timid on your throttle hand that's gonna help uh, prevent some stalls when you first get used to the bike but if you're got a heavy uh, whiskey throttle wrist then you might be in for a little surprise. All right, here we go. Woo! Oh, baby, it's got some punch. All right, getting a little bit more wind noise in my helmet than I normally get. So I'm going to open this little vent up and see what happens. That changes things. And it does. Very nice. It's still there though. If I duck down, I don't get as much. So I'm getting a little bit of buffeting at six foot tall sitting on this. Seat wise, it doesn't uh, grip you as tight as the Ultra Classic that I just got off of does. Um, it's a lot more comfortable as far as movement that you have. You got a little bit more wiggle room on your waist and hips. All right, that's 
it for Rayma. Let's uh, go into road mode and see what we got going on here. <coughs> 50 miles per hour, 3,500 RPM. Easy cruising. It feels a lot more rambunctious than the 114 at these same speeds. It feels like there's a lot of power. It's just sitting there twiddling its thumbs, waiting for you to do something. Um, I feel more vibrations in the floorboard, which I like that. Decel, I'm getting some vibrations here. As I downshift in a second. Oh yeah, it just wants to scoot. Rev limiter. So in first, the rev limiter was right around 45 miles per hour. So I don't feel as much as I'm sitting straight up in a chair because I don't have that, hey, we got parts flying at us. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I do feel upright. The bars appear to be the same height and same placement as the Ultra Classic and the Street Glide. So no really big change there. Besides the stunning physical appearance with the addition of the LED indicators and how they've redesigned that and the redesigned dash, the riding experience, it's still authentic Harley Davidson. They haven't really messed with the sauce too much there, which I appreciate. So I guess the only drawbacks that I can think of right now thus far is the amount of buffeting that I'm getting on my helmet. It is noisy, so if I was to buy this bike as it is, I would want to probably look into a different helmet, uh, maybe a showy RF 1400 or something that's known to be quiet. And that's kind of unique for me. Most of my uh, demo rides on, I've ridden every Harley bike this year. This is the last one I haven't ridden yet, and I'm getting buffeting. As far as handling it, I mean, it feels very nimble. As I mentioned, uh, the last bagger that I rode, which is the Ultra Classic, is just amazing how Harley can make these bikes so nimble, and yet they're so heavy. And of course, once you get going, pretty much almost like any other motorcycle, it's just the lower speed maneuvers where you have to, you have to do some practice with the friction zone. Rear brake. Not as stiff as the Ultra Classic, but I do have twice the amount of miles on this rear brake than the Ultra Classic had. Yeah, look at that, just wants to dip and dive into the corners. <laughs> so I just press the rear brake and when I travel in groups I use the rear brake a lot so I'm not grabbing that front brake and nose diving and uh, the tires the tread really gripped the ground and gave me a little feedback there one thing I would recommend that is if you're going to change a mode or do something with your thumb be sure to kind of let go of the grip otherwise the throttle is going to go with you <laughs> and rolling back on the throttle means you're going to go faster but uh, we'll be able to get up on the highway here soon and depending on the speed of everybody around me we'll see how uh, this baby does on the highway but the throttle is a little bit more sensitive than other bikes that I've ridden in this same class in the touring class not as sensitive as my experience on Indian Sport Chief. That was really twitchy in sport mode. This one is not as twitchy in sport mode. Much more refined, but it is different. But nothing that you couldn't get used to after uh, riding it for a little bit. But it seems like no matter where I'm at and what mode I'm in, this bike is like twiddling its thumbs waiting for me to do something because it's ready to deliver anything that I need power-wise. And I rode a uh, Stage 4 Blue Rider S, and it felt, 
very similar in that regard. So I think once you're up in that 121, 122, 128 and above with Harley's engines, it's uh, another level of performance that we haven't experienced with the 117s and the 114s and 107s and so forth. All right, here we go, on to the interstate. Sport mode, third gear. Very smooth. Still in third gear at 80. even get out of third gear on that baby yeah so <laughs> looks like because of the group ride nature and what have you being in the back of the pack I guess all right here's some more speed but yeah you can just cruise on at speed limits on the interstate you're still in third gear that's that's just blowing my mind I ride a 1996 Evo Softail and I'm being fifth gear vibrating all the way down. It's just as smooth as butter. Now, unlike non CVO models, the cruise control isn't just right here, it's in the menu. So it's not as easy to get to, in my opinion. That's something I'd like to see them change if possible. Get it up in the fourth. When you're ready to shift, the bike lets you know it's like it gets a little bit of twisty at the higher RPMs of the gear when it's stopping out and it's like, okay, you need to shift. And so if you're at the top of the, the gear and you're accelerating, then you just let go a little bit on the acceleration on the throttle, it, it, it's a little bit twitchy. And then when you shift in, it just resumes smoothness. But excellent handling motorcycle on the interstate. Downshift in the third. Yeah, they got this dialed in. Just takes a little bit of uh, you know familiarity with the ride and how the bike is, what the bike is giving you, and then you respond accordingly to how she likes to be ridden. So is loke DJL. That's what he says. Damn it. All right, that's going to wrap up my first ride of the 2023 CVO Street Glide. Let's head back in for my final thoughts. All right, the 2023 Street Glide CVO. To me, is beginning to stray away from Harley's traditional feel of its controls and engine performance. A plus for me was the extra idle and low speed RPM over an M8. For a first ride, I've been known not to give it enough throttle in the friction zone, and the CVO guided me at low speeds nicely. I appreciated its rambunctious engine in second and third gears. However, the throttle control was twitchy. Not nearly as bad as the Indian Sport Chief that I rode, but along those same lines. Its throttle and power delivery performance is the biggest departure from any of the other Harleys I've ever ridden. That includes the Pan America and the Nystra S. Both of those bikes have the same ride modes, but they execute those modes much, much better in my opinion. I don't like the fact that the cruise control is up top and behind the hand control cluster. I prefer it down below the hand controls like on all other M8 models. I realized I could use Bluetooth to engage cruise control, so perhaps Harley will reach out and offer me some additional time to evaluate this bike. I apologize this first ride was quick. It was my first and only opportunity to ride a CVO in my area here at Biketoberfest in Daytona Beach. The bike does haul the mail, no question. The seat is not as comfy as other touring model offerings that I've ridden. The aesthetics are fantastic. They're top notch. The new LED lighting features are perfect. We've been asking HD to get rid of the halogen bulbs and their housings for almost 10 years now. And they've shown us their industrial design team can modernize the look of a touring chassis model without straying too far from how we've come to enjoy and appreciate the look of a street glide and a road glide. I can't say that for the operation and feedback of the controls. It's a digression. The engine is powerful, but a stage 3 or 4 Milwaukee 8 delivering 122 cubic inches feels better and is much more engaging, as I found out test riding the Lowrider S with a stage 3. 
I think if they scrap the VVT and the rider modes and just deliver what's in their stage kit for a 122 or a 128 or a 131, we'd be happy with that. And so will your bank account. How well will the CVO streak lights stack up against the rest of the Harley line for 2023? I don't know yet. I still have a few more first ride videos to share with you, including the Softail Heritage, Road King Special, and more. So subscribe and hit that bell to be notified on my next one. Then when I've dropped them all, I'm going to do a recap video and you'll find out which Harley model I'm picking as the best one of 2023. Thanks for watching this one, and if you want to see my first ride video of the Fat Boy 114, be sure to click the box, and I'll see you there. Let's get it. Rev limiter. So second gear goes to 70. <laughs> if you look up Cruiser, this is the quintessential Cruiser from Harley-Davidson. It's one of the most iconic bikes.